I said I would offer a different perspective on who we are as human beings. Why do we bother with this? Management is ultimately about people. And who we think people are does matter. If we think we're a bunch of greedy bastards that want to maximize their utility, then we're going to operate like that. If we think that we're more complex, maybe we have different ways of managing people, of leading people, of being with people. And this is, I think, at the core of how we can address the bigger challenges we talked about before. Now, let me share with you a perspective on who we are as human beings that also is a narrative that assumes that we humans share something in common. We have something in common with each other. In the next lectures, we will look at what and how humans can be different. But here, it's clear we're looking at what we have in common. The economistic narrative tells us what we have in common. In short, we're greedy Gordon geckos. Here, I want to take a lot more time to develop an alternative perspective. Uh, and that starts with the development of us as a species. I'm basing this on the work of many evolutionary insights, anthropology, and in many ways on the work of Paul Lawrence, a business school professor at the Harvard Business School that I was able to work with for some time. It is an evolutionary account. <clears throat> And it says and shares that we as humans have developed quite remarkably, substantively. And that in several ways, Homo economicus may be in us, but is certainly not complete and good description of who we are. Now, let me start sharing this perspective with the conclusion. The conclusion is that we are driven by four independent drives that were developed over our evolutionary history from Homo habilis and Australopithecus who lived in the trees and who possibly behaved like Homo economicus, very individualistic, very utility maximizing, immoral, and opportunistic to a species that was very tribal that we call now Homo erectus, very social, to a species that on top of being social also wants to understand and we call it Homo sapiens. Sapiens stands for knowing, for being wise, for understanding and generating meaning. <clears throat> Our ancestors, according to the evolutionist account, were living basically in these kind of habitats, in these kind of environments. They were living on trees. They sometimes would get together, um, but they would be rather lonely. They would be eating the food of the trees. They would be living in the trees that protected them from other predators and they would be rather safe. They would be able to eat and acquire what they would need, which is the DA sign and what Paul Lawrence calls the drive to acquire. And at the same time, they would be able to defend themselves against other predators so that they can survive. So survival in that context is seen as acquisition of the goods that you need to do to survive and being able to defend. In many ways, this accounts for the survival of any species, any animal, any amoeba, any cell. We need to acquire things and we need to be able to defend ourselves 
against predators, otherwise we simply die. So Australopithecus and Homo habilis in this narrative are able to survive for quite a while because they're able to get what they need to thrive and they're able to defend themselves against those that might not want them to survive. These are the foundational drives that we share, the drive to acquire the things that we need and the drive to defend them, so says Paul Lawrence. Unfortunately, <clears throat> over time, we had a number of environmental challenges and climate change hit and the cradle of humanity, as it's called Africa, was quit, hit quite hard, so much so that it was de uh, becoming a desert. The trees were not providing the kind of protection for our hominoid ancestors as they used to. They wouldn't bear the fruit. So they had to go down from the trees and that's when we would see in the fossil record that we would become upright, walking, erectus, homo erectus. In this notion of climate change, many or most hominoid ancestors died. They simply couldn't survive. They couldn't get what they needed to fulfill the drive to acquire, and they couldn't defend themselves against others. However, a new species emerged that was able to do that much better. <clears throat> 